Thank you for joining us for Easter worship this morning. With all that's changed, all the most important stuff is exactly the same. The tomb is still empty, Jesus is still risen, and our life is still all wrapped up in Christ. His death, our death, His life, our life. Today we'll have an opportunity to talk about an unchanging victory in constantly changing times. We'll begin our worship this morning with Christ is risen, He's risen indeed. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Thank you for joining us for our worship this morning as we have the opportunity to consider a victory that is ours in the empty tomb. We'll use the order of service as found on the screen in front of you. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We worship this Easter morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all people. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, <clears throat> at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound the dead will be raised imperishable. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, 
I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithless, worrying, and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we who have been raised with him through baptism may walk in newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing his glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Spirit be dominion and praise, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this Easter morning is Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Our victory is found in Christ. A victory over sin, a victory over death, a victory over guilt, a victory that lasts into eternity. Into eternity. And yet, it is a hidden victory. A victory that oftentimes, you and I, even as Christians, fail to see. But God lifts our eyes to see the truth. Year after year, we have the opportunity to gaze into the empty tomb and consider what is ours in the fact that Christ is risen. Once more, we take our trip to the tomb along with the women and rejoice in Jesus' resurrection by reading from Matthew chapter 28, beginning at verse 1. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had come from heaven and was going to the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I've told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. We'll join in singing or in hearing, I know that my Redeemer lives. Uh, you'll see that on the screen.
from him who is, who was, and who is to come, from our risen and resurrected Lord, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for consideration this Easter morning is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. We'll read that, and you can follow along on the screen. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's easy to see a new world with old world eyes. You see, a part of our human condition oftentimes is that it's hard for our eyes to lift above the fray and to really understand the significance of what's going on. For example, when Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas, he had his heart set on finding a passage to the Orient. You see, he had grown up hearing tales of Marco Polo's exploits and all the riches and, and all the things that could be found in the Far East. And he had been told that if he sailed west, it'd be closer than going east. And so he set out with his heart set and finding that passage to the Orient and all the riches that were found there. When he got there, he named the indigenous peoples Indians because he thought he had reached the West Indies. And he spent the rest of his life trying to find that passage. But he missed what was right in front of him. This beautiful continent that, that people from his country didn't know existed. A place what were, with cities that were larger than any in Europe, with peoples with a rich culture, with vast trading networks, a land full of botanical marvels that would revolutionize food production in Europe and the rest of the world, creating a population boom, crops like corn and potatoes, natural resources that continue to revolutionize our world today, things like rubber trees and the rest. Things that made a much bigger impact on the world than golden spices ever could have had. But he missed it. He had his heart set so much on that passage to the Orient that he missed what was right in front of him. He found a new world, but he viewed it with old world eyes. We can do the same thing. It is so hard to rise above the fray and to truly understand the significance of what's going on around us. We always lose the forest for the trees, don't we? As we find ourselves in, in, in a pretty strange time, I think that's important to remember. I mean, just a couple months ago, social distancing wasn't even a thing. And the idea of someone being in quarantine was the kind of thing you heard about in the movies. It almost never happened in real life. Now these are everyday things. If you'd have told me a couple of months ago that, that our economy would have crashed and unemployment would have skyrocketed to levels not seen since the Great Depression, I would have told you you were crazy. But here we are. People shut up in their homes wearing masks when they're out in public, afraid of getting sick or, or getting others sick. What a strange time. And I've heard all kinds of people talk about how this is going to affect us in the future. But, but finally, the hit, hindsight of history is 2020. We really don't know. It's so hard to let our eyes rise above the fray and to see how all of this is really affecting us. What's it all going to mean for us? And Easter can be like that. I mean, the first Easter was. We read through Matthew 28, verse 1 to 10, and you saw it there. When the women go to the tomb, what do they expect to find? a dead Jesus that, that they could use to use their burial spices on. When the disciples are gathered together, they're gathered together with the doors locked and they're afraid. They were living in a new world of Jesus' resurrection, but they were viewing it with their old world eyes. And now us? What we're used to on Easter morning, getting up early, making breakfast, Dressing up in our Sunday best, getting the kids to church, getting together with family and friends, traveling here or there. How's it look now? Empty churches, sitting in your living room, 
Instead of your Sunday best, maybe you're wearing your pajamas. Instead of getting together with all kinds of your friends and family, maybe it'll just be a couple of you. It's so hard to lift our eyes and see that nothing's changed. That you and I have the same victory today we had then. And yet, it can be hidden from our eyes. In fact, Paul says that's exactly what it is. Look at Colossians 3, verse 3. Paul writes, For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Our life is all wrapped up in Jesus. His life is our life. His death is our death. It's as real a fact as the waters that were poured on your head in your baptism. You are His, and He is yours. But it is hidden. When you walk down the street, someone doesn't look at you. They can't see that, that you're all wrapped up in Him. They can't see that you've died and rose with Jesus. It's hidden to the world around us. At times, maybe even hidden to ourselves. Do you ever find yourself asking, does it have to be so hidden? Wouldn't it be nice if our life matched that, that victorious message we flashed at the beginning of, uh, of our service? Wouldn't it be nice if, if you didn't have to worry about unemployment, if, if your job was secure, if everyone was happy and healthy, if life was just continuing to roll around the way it had been? But now... This morning, after you're done watching this service, those very same computer screens or television screens are going to talk to you about numbers of people getting sick and numbers of people who have died and this and that. If you go out to a store, you'll see people wearing masks. If you go out to drive, you'll notice how much less traffic there is. And the fact that Christ is risen, the fact that His life is our life, it can be hidden not only from the world, but even from us. Our eyes so quickly are dragged down. Down from all that Jesus won for us and lost in the midst of all of our cares and worries of the present time. But Christ is risen. That hasn't changed. It's the exact same. And the victory is just as complete now as it was a year ago or as it ever has been. And today, through the power of God's word, the Apostle Paul lifts our eyes up past quarantines and sickness past living rooms and empty churches, lifts your eyes up to the victory Jesus won for us. We read once more from Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died. And your life is now hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. As Paul says, our life is all wrapped up in Jesus. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, our Easter vigil. You and I weren't watching those services as spiritual tourists. Like people sitting at a Civil War battlefield reading plaques. As you and I sat beneath Jesus' cross, as we saw the sky grow dark, as we felt the ground shake, as we saw those tombs break open, there we saw our death. As the Son of God breathed his left at last and lay lifeless on that cross, there we saw all that we regret die. There we saw all we wish we could change but can't die. There we saw all the things that keep us up at night. There we saw our fear, our uncertainty. It all died with them there. As we looked at Jesus on the cross, we looked at the death of our sin, our guilt, and even death itself. Because on the third day, Jesus rose. And we read about that in Matthew chapter 28 as the women peered inside of that tomb. And it is just as important for us to remember today as it was 2,000 years ago. Because as we peer into that tomb this Easter morning, the tomb is still empty. Those grave clothes are still neatly stacked, laying to the side. And what the angel said is still true. Not just that Christ has risen, 
Not just that Jesus did rise from the dead, but Christ is risen. risen. He does live right now. And just as you died with him, now you live with him. You rose with him. His life is your life. A life of freedom. Day after day, we battle temptations, the same things over and over again, and brand new ones popping up here and there. And yet God says they don't own you. They don't define you. You are what God calls you. Holy, forgiven, perfect in the blood of Jesus shed for you. When Jesus walked out of the tomb, you walked out with him. And in that new life is freedom from temptation, from guilt, from fear, and from death. Today, the Apostle Paul does what only he can do. He lifts up our hearts and our minds to see the beauty of the victory that is ours. Even when it seems everything else has changed, that remains the same. Hidden with Christ and God. You know, the explorers who followed Christopher Columbus, many of them at least, they continued to view this new world with old world eyes and they chased after myths and fables, fountains of youth, cities of gold, and they missed what was right in front of them. And as we consider how the coronavirus is going to change our world, I guess we'll see. I heard one person say that handshakes will go away. I heard another person say that working remotely is going to be the norm. I've I've read articles that that churches should have smaller gatherings to keep the group small so people can spread out. But honestly, I think we're just kind of fishing in the dark. We don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. We can't look down the road and know how exactly all this will affect things. But you know, in Christ, our eyes are raised above the fray. This morning, we have a chance to set our hearts and our minds on things above. And none of this changes that. Right now, he's sitting at the right hand of God. Jesus, ruling all things for the good of the church that he died for, that he rose for. And as Paul says in Colossians 3, one day he's going to come back. And we live our eyes looking to the horizon for the day Jesus comes back for us where we appear with him glorious, risen from the dead, just as he rose. This Easter, I hope you enjoy the celebrating you have the opportunity to do. Soon, this will pass too, and life will continue to go on. But that victory that's yours, that remains forever. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Amen. We continue with prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the victory you won us over sin, death, and the devil in your death and your resurrection in our place. We remember the following people in our prayers, knowing that you sit at the right hand of God, hearing, answering our prayers, and working all things out in the best interests of your church and your people. We thank you for being with Gloria Pagel, the wife of Pastor Pagel, who completed her cancer treatments and surgery and is now recovering. We ask that you'd be with her as she continues to recover in this dangerous time and that you'd always fill her with an abiding sense of your constant presence. Lord, we ask that you'd be with the family of Drex Hansen, grandfather of Abby Halla, who was taken to heaven. Comfort them with the sure hope of a reunion in heaven and a resurrection from the dead, knowing that on Easter of all days especially, we see in you life even in death. Lord, we ask you'd be with friends and members of St. Matthew who have been ill um, and who are recovering. For those who have contracted the coronavirus and now are, are, are recovering, be with them as they continue to restore their strength and regain their strength. And once again, remind them that you're a God who stands by their side, holding all things in the palm of his hand for the good of his people. We ask that you would protect all those who are affected by the coronavirus, that you would grant healing to those who suffer from it, and that you'd grant relief for us from it soon. Be with health workers as they work in our hospitals to to try and use the medical means we have on our behalves. 
Be with our local government as they do their best to try to keep peace and order and to continue to have our economies going in this difficult time. Be with those who are unemployed, who have lost employment. Help them to lay aside their worries and cares, knowing that you guide all things for your people. Be with those who are sick and those who have lost loved ones, comforting them in the empty tomb. We pray this, and we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For then is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We continue with Christ Jesus lay in death strong bands. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Thank you for joining us for Easter worship this morning. A special thank you to all our musicians, to our camera crew, to all the people who helped us be able to live stream this service for you. Uh, if you'd like to support our ministry, you can go to our website, stmatthewlutheran.com, uh, click on About Us and Donate, and you can offer your offering there. Um, have a great rest of the week, um, and Lord's blessings on your Easter. <laughs>